Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and I am the owner of Alicia Be Creative and today's tutorial is yet another rhinestone tumbler tutorial and so I'm going to show you how to create this really cute and winter but also pastel vibes sort of rhinestone tumbler. I'm going to show you exactly all the stones that I use as well as how I put this together and how I get that beautiful scatter ombre look of the stones right in the center section there. So of course everything I use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked down in the description box down below. Be sure to check that description box out for discount codes as well as links to all of my other social media pages that you can follow me on. So let's go ahead and jump right in into today's tutorial. So I am starting with this 14 ounce handled mug that I actually purchased from Michael's on a recent craft store trip. And so I decided that I wanted to bling this out. So the first thing I'm going to do is prep this and then I'm going to take this outside and do an ombre with aromatherapy and splash spray paint from Color Shop. So once I've got that already done, I am going to be utilizing the snowflakes from a previous tutorial. And these are the stones that I'm going to be using. So I have some white resin stones with the AB coating. I also have amethyst amethyst and aquamarine stones that are glass stones purchased from crown crystals. I have all sizes of those, um, rhinestones. And then additionally, I have my tray. I have my crystal glaze glue, my wax pen. And then this is something new. This is my Bowen cup turner and it's perfect for blinging tumblers. So this is called the bling queen too. And this is what I'm going to be using, which has really been helpful to really help me get through those long periods of time that I am blinging. So the first thing I'm going to be doing after I apply that snowflake is I'm just going to bling the snowflake out. So because these snowflake images are really fine, I'm going to be using the two millimeter stones that I have purchased from Amazon. So I know they're in a different container, but these ones I actually purchased from Amazon. And I'm going to be using my crystal glaze glue to just get these all applied. So all I'm doing here is just taking these white resin stones and I'm just following the line of the snowflakes and just filling up this entire snowflake here. So as I mentioned, I do have almost all sizes for my amethyst and aquamarine stones that I purchased from Crown Crystals. I have from two millimeter up to five millimeter in the aquamarine but in the amethyst I only had three four and five millimeters and that was just because at the time that I purchased my stones they didn't have the two millimeter stones which I love to use to get in those really teeny tiny crevices but I will show you kind of what I use those teeny tiny stones for when I'm doing scatter method because it's perfect for these snowflake sections those in between sections that um you know larger stones can't really fit in between so I'm just going to continue to bling out this stone. So again, just following the line and I'm using all the same size stone except for the center of the snowflake, which I was able to fit a larger rhinestone, but I just did this throughout the entire cup. I always like to start with the sort of decal work first before I go into doing and filling up sort of the background canvas. So you guys kind of saw me do this in my B rhinestone tumbler tutorial I did a few months back. And that's kind of how I like to approach all of my um, tumblers that are rhinestone based. I start with the decals and then kind of move my way outward. It just seems to be the easiest way for me to work. So now I'm just going to begin, as you've already seen, I've started a section right around a snowflake. And the reason why I like to start close to the snowflake is so that I can really get super close to the snowflake and be able to use those tiny two millimeter stones in those teeny tiny sections um, where the blue spray paint is exposed. So what you do with scatter method, as I have explained before, Scatter method for me is my favorite. I know a lot of people do prefer the honeycomb method and I promise I do have a tutorial coming that is a full honeycomb method tutorial tumbler rhinestones, um, rhinestone tumbler. And, um, but for me, I just enjoy scatter method because I'm someone who's always enjoyed the game of like Tetris. Like I remember playing that as a kid. Um, and I just love like just finding the stones to like fit in those small spaces. So Something else that I always want to mention, especially with scatter method, is you will have spaces. So it's not going to be completely perfect. You will always have spaces with scatter method, whereas honeycomb, usually everything kind of fits in just like a puzzle. 
But what I try and do is why I like to have the two millimeter stones in my mix of stones is because then I can use those smaller stones to fit in some of those spaces and leave less of that paint exposed underneath. But it is super common and makes complete sense to have a little bit of spacing in between stones because again, we're placing different size stones kind of next to one another as like a puzzle and just trying to get them fit trying to get them to fit as best as we can. But of course, the little tiny spaces in between the stones, because they're not all flushed together, are completely inevitable, and it's completely supposed to be just part of that process. So this is just a more kind of up-close view of me rhinestoning the section by section. So I like to just kind of make my way around this cup. So you're gonna see that I'm going to start with the aquamarine stones going all the way around this bottom portion of the cup, like this bot, almost this bottom third of the cup. But then I'm gonna leave quite a bit of section in the center because that section is where we're going to be doing the ombre. So where I'll be doing a mix of stones that kind of almost look like what it would look like if I had used glitter in these two colors, that middle section that looks mixed. Um, but you can still very much see that purple and also capture and see the blue as well. So just continuing to do this, this is a process. This is definitely not a type or design or a tumbler that is going to only take you a few hours. <laughs> probably in total, this took me a full week to complete, probably working on it a couple hours at a time. And I probably did about four sessions or so with this tumbler. So all in all, if I had to guess, it probably took me anywhere from six to seven hours. And that was just because I usually am blinging while I'm watching something. And sometimes it's very easy for me to get distracted while I am blinging or rhinestoning something. So just continuing to finish up this section. So again, I'm gonna go completely around the tumbler with the aquamarine stones before I move into the amethyst section. But let's go ahead and take a look at working on the bottom section here because that's a very important part of the tumbler. We're gonna be working on creating that straight line all the way around the bottom edge of the cup to establish sort of that final line of rhinestones and how I create that line on my rhinestones there or on my tumblers there to make sure that I have a nice straight line. So before we get to that, I did wanna show you kind of what this looks like when I'm blinging kind of front on. So I do like to prop this up on a box, my Bling Queen 2, because it then puts it a little bit closer to my face. Even though you can very much angle it, um, the arm is able to be angled in like three different directions. So I could make it higher, as you'll see me tilt it a few times throughout the video. Um, but I do like to prop it up a little bit because then it's a little bit closer to my face and then I don't have to worry about bending over so far and having any sort of, you know, neck or back issues because, because I've been blinging for so long. So back to creating the kind of bottom section and line here. So I've talked about this before, but your top and bottom rim is very important, very much like you would be doing a, you know, epoxy tumbler. Those rims are super important, right? And super vulnerable. So we wanna make sure we establish a nice straight line. So I apply a thin line of glue with my crystal glaze glue. And then you'll see me work in small sections and then I'll take the cup off of my Bling Queen 2 and I will set it flush against the table. And then I'll use my wax pencil to just push the stones down. And this is to make sure that they're all lined up evenly. So I have a nice straight line and I don't have a wacky wavy line, which sometimes can happen. So here's my final line here. So you will know I have a little bit of gap here and that's okay because now I'm just gonna finish taking my stones and again, playing that game of Tetris with the scatter method and filling in all those spaces and gaps with the stones that will fit in that place. So once I have finished this bottom section, this bottom third section here, I now I'm gonna move on to the top section. So these are my amethyst stones. And as I mentioned, I have three, four and five millimeter stones for this uh, for this color. I didn't get, wasn't able to grab the two millimeter stones because there wasn't any in stock when I purchased these. Um, but all in all, I was able to get pretty close to those snowflakes, which is really what I was utilizing the two millimeter stones for kind of those really tiny intricate spaces that no other size stone would fit. 
But all in all, I did get pretty close. I still might go back and purchase amethyst stones when they become available and fill in this space potentially. But honestly, I really was happy with how it came out. So I probably won't go back to it, but it's a thought that you could certainly do and place those smaller stones after the fact. So I'm doing the exact same thing I did to the bottom line there. We're establishing that top line that is going to be the very top of the tumbler. So turning my cup upside down and using my wax pencil to really push down my stone so that I can create that nice straight line all the way around the tumbler here. So this takes a little bit of time. I like to move in small sections. That way my glue doesn't dry too quickly on me. I do really love and enjoy the crystal glazed glue. I've been using it for a few tumblers now. And at first I wasn't sure what I thought about it because I really was really familiar and kind of keen on using liquid fusion glue. And um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with liquid fusion, but I wanted to give the crystal glaze glue a try as well. And I really do like it. It does dry rather quick. It does remind me a little bit of liquid fusion, but I do find that Chris, that the crown crystal glue, the crystal glaze is much tackier, which I like because my stones then are secured a little bit more quickly even than my liquid fusion. So as you see, I'm now working with kind of this top third section here. And here is now where we have this very center section exposed and how I'm going to start to create the ombre. So what I like to do is I'm starting with my amethyst stones and I'm just putting different dots up against the blue aquamarine stones on the bottom third section and putting in those places different sized amethyst stones that will fit. So this is going to kind of be the lowest point where the ombre of stones were, will go for the purple or amethyst stones. And then I'll do the exact same thing for the top third section where there's amethyst stones. I'll then go back and use the aquamarine stones in different low points and high points of that section. I'll start to place my aquamarine stones. So this is kind of how I prefer to do kind of the ombre or scatter of all the colors in the center. I want it to look purposeful, but this is kind of strategically in my head what makes the most sense. Otherwise, if I don't do this step and just try to do it in sections as I go, I tend to uh, overthink it and I'll put too many blue stones in one section or too many of the purple stones in one section. So I found that this works the best for me. So now I'm going back and doing the exact thing I did with the amethyst stones, but I'm doing it in the reverse. So I'm putting the aquamarine up against my line of amethyst section up top here. And this is just what makes the most sense. So in this center section, and you're going to see a lot of time lapses here because obviously it would take, it would take a lot of time <laughs> to watch me literally rhinestone this entire cup. But as I start to move section by section, after I've kind of scattered a bunch of the different colored stones against kind of the top third and the bottom third of the, um, the sections. As I move section by section, what you have to keep in mind is that in the aquamarine section, which is primarily blue, I'm going to have mostly blue with scattered purple stones. And in the top third section, as I'm working my way down, I'm going to have mostly amethyst stones with blue sprinkled in. So just like you would with a tumbler, if you're doing epoxy method um, or, you know, glittering a tumbler, it's that same process, except for you're doing it at the same time versus one section at a time. This is what I've found to work the best for me. I do know that there are plenty of other techniques that other people who rhinestone tumblers do in order to get that ombre look. This is just what makes the most sense in my head. So as you can see, I am just kind of taking both sides, both colored stones and just going back and forth with that middle section there. Again, up towards the top of the purple, focusing mostly on purple, but adding a few blue and then vice versa. So for this style tumbler, I really was kind of intimidated to try this cup originally, like this ombre look. I've done one other cup and I wasn't super satisfied with how it looked, but I decided to give it another shot. And I think that the strategy that I use really did work to my advantage. So this entire cup is now all completely rhinestoned, but we have to finish off this cup by finishing the bottom and the handle. So we're going to be using a combination of some glitter and UV resin to coat the bottom here. But I also want to show you guys these cute little logo tags that I got from Mizzy Doodles. I got a pack of like 15 or 20 for really inexpensive and they're perfect for adding 
to your rhinestone tumblers. So I prefer to add my logo tag to the bottom of the tumbler with my UV resin, but I do know that you, and I've seen other people apply them directly to sort of the side as they're rhinestoning so that their logo is always present on the tumbler. So I'm gonna start by removing the little paper backing from the front and back of my logo tag. And we're gonna be mixing a little bit of Glacier Blue. This is glitter from Bella Nieve Creations and I will link her website down in the description box. I purchased her Black Friday bundle and I'm absolutely obsessed with all the colors that it came with. I cannot wait to really be able to get into using these as soon as I get my next order of bottles in because they are all absolutely beautiful and I just, I can't wait to get started with those. You guys know me in glitter. So I'm gonna add a little bit of UV resin to a medicine cup and then I'm just gonna coat the top with the Glacier Blue glitter. That should be more than enough glitter to you know, thoroughly mix throughout the UV resin so that I can pour this into the center cavity. So I'm just going to take my UV resin, which was about five to seven-ish mLs. There wasn't really a lot in the bottom of that cup. And I'm just going to pour that in the center and then kind of tilt my cup and use my stir stick to make sure I get all of the UV resin kind of coating the entire center cavity there, that kind of indent in the bottom section. So, and then just using my stir stick to just make sure that everything looks good and it's kind of perfectly placed. So you don't wanna to add too much UV resin to the bottom or resin of any sort to the bottom. You wanna make sure that when you look at it eye level that it's completely flat. If you look at your cup on the bottom and it's starting to dome, you need to remove some of that UV resin out. That way you can make sure that when you turn your cup upside down on the bottom, it's not going to have a wobbly bottom. So I always say err on the side of caution, less is better than more because you can always add more UV UV resin, you can't really take it away. So I just spritz that to remove all of the bubbles with some alcohol, and then we're just gonna place my logo tag directly in the center, and then I'm gonna cure this for two cycles of two minutes, and that was enough cure time to make sure that this was rock solid and that it's good to go. So now let's go ahead and take care of this handle business. Okay, so for the handle, if you are going to glitter the handle like I am right now, I definitely would advise doing it before you start the rhinestone process. I originally thought that I would bling the handle, but then after thinking about how much wear and tear would normally be happening with obviously holding the cup by the handle, I decided it probably would be smarter to glitter it. So I've just taped off the handle and taped over the rhinestones just to make sure I don't get any UV resin on them when I apply my glittered UV resin here. And in that medicine cup, I have a bit of UV resin and then I've mixed in my Astra Magic from my Astra Creations. So with that handle taped off with my painter's tape, I'm just gonna take my gloved hand and just apply the glittered UV resin all the way around the handle. So I'm gonna do one initial coat with just the glittered UV resin and I'll cure that and then I'll go in with some clear UV resin over top to really make sure that this handle is sealed. So the reason why I would say to do it beforehand is because then you can kind of get everything all secured and you don't have to worry about taping things off and you really can just then put the rhinestones on afterward. So I just feel like it would be smarter and easier that way. Or you could totally also epoxy the entire cup with the handle glittered. That also would save you a little bit um, to make sure that everything is smooth. So after I've done that initial coat, I had to cure that for about two to three minutes or so and now we're just gonna go over with a couple layers of the UV resin just by itself, no glitter, and that's just to make sure I have a nice smooth handle to work with. I will say that it was kind of difficult to get my UV lamp to uh, cure the inner portion of the handle because it was just difficult to get it to like shine directly into that inner handle section. But after quite a few passes and a few minutes under the UV lamp, everything was nice and secure. So once I am done curing the handle and I'm kind of good with that, I'm going to remove the tape. This is the other thing and the other reason why I would suggest doing the handle first before you do the rhinestoning. I should have taken off the tape when I did my first initial um, 
pass of the glitter UV resin before I put it under the lamp. So I had a couple sections where the tape got stuck to the UV resin. And so I was able to pull it off, but it also removed some of the UV resin layers. So I had to reapply UV resin and then cure it once again. So definitely do the handle first. <laughs> but all in all, that was all I needed to do to finish off this tumbler. And I am absolutely obsessed with how this winter tumbler looks. I hope that you enjoyed today's tutorial. It was a lot of fun to do. I definitely want to do some more of these rhinestone tutorials for my channel. So if you love today's video, definitely be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and also comment down below if you love today's video and you'd love to see more of this. So that's it for today. And you guys know that I will be back again with another video soon. Bye.